They could have invented the phrase true blue for places like Chesham and Amersham in Buckinghamshire. Invincible green suburbs, genteel as can be, even in the June rain. Conservative in one way or another since universal suffrage. But no longer. Lib Dem Sarah Green took the seat last night on one of the biggest swings seen to the party in the last 30 years. Do you know what happens when a really powerful, strong orange force goes against a blue wall? For its leader, Ed Davey. Yeah. I'm back. <laughs> Much criticised, it is a lifeline. Finally, his party is dangerous again. Well, I think this will send a shockwave through British politics. Uh, Liberal Democrats have had good wins in the past, but this is our best ever by-election victory. And if it was repeated across the South, literally dozens of Conservative seats would fall to the Liberal Democrats. Green Sarah Louise of the Liberal Democrat Party is duly elected. They were right to be jubilant. It was a serious win. The constituency had a Tory majority of over 12,000 in 2019. There was a 25% swing from Conservative to Lib Dem last night, translating to a new Lib Dem majority of over 8,000. The Lib Dems partly did it via Conservative switches, but also by squeezing the votes of other parties, especially Labour, whose vote was reduced to negligible levels. But why? The local Tory chairman ascribes the Lib Dem's success to a series of particular and perhaps local problems. HS2 is a big one. Even if some of the works for HS2 aren't near where you live, they're affecting roads which people drive on. Almost everyone is going to feel the effect of, of that work at the moment. And there are concerns about planning. The government does need to recognise that people want a careful balance to be struck. And do you think that the balance isn't quite right at the moment? I think people are worried that the balance is going to be too pro-developer. But of course, planning, housing, infrastructure aren't local. They're national, central to this government's new levelling up agenda, which adverts to another explanation, that the blue wall, like its red counterpart, is shakier than it used to be. The local election results showed a suite of Lib Dem gains across the south of England. They won St Albans Council, they made gains in Tunbridge Wells, in Oxfordshire, Surrey, Wokingham, Hertfordshire. Buckinghamshire, in some places depriving the Tories of a majority they had long held. And even in the 2019 general election, which was a poor result for the party, it was little noticed that the Lib Dems came second in 80 constituencies in England and Wales, many in the south of England, a clear base on which to build, 44 of which have Tory majorities smaller than Chesham. For old hands like David Gork, who used to represent a neighbouring seat, this is partly about the shifting sands of the British electoral map. There is a sense that these are voters who no longer feel as comfortable with the Conservative Party as they once did, uh, don't particularly um, respond positively to the Prime Minister and his style, uh, feel uncomfortable with a pretty hard Brexit. In 2019, they voted comfortably Conservative because of the fear of Jeremy Corbyn, but you take that fear away uh, and things can, things can change. This prosperous corner of England is distant from places like Hartlepool in every sense. But listening to the parents of the children at the Sergeant and Plester Dance School in the constituency, the way they talk about the party which has dominated the politics of their place for so long, the words are nearly the same. What do I think of Boris Johnson? Yeah. I think we can do better. Even as a Conservative vote, mm. Mm. I've loved all our past leaders, but I think Boris is just a little bit up and down. The way they were doing their campaign this year, I think, really worked, because you can't turn a corner without seeing anything about Lib Dem. I think they've just put their feet up, they've become complacent, they felt this is a safe seat, and they haven't listened to the people of Cheshire. I know quite a few people that have only ever voted Tory, that I've spoken to today, actually, and they voted Lib Dem um, for the first time ever. And their reasons were because they really, really wanted change. They really wanted to be heard. The Prime Minister said that this result was peculiar and particular today to Chesham and Amersham. But the result will reverberate through British politics. The most important thing about this result is how it affects the psychology of politics. Up to now, the Conservatives in England, at least, have appeared invulnerable, almost hegemonic. They've been able to expand their electoral map, their coalition, almost without limit. Taken together with the local election results, this by-election suggests that might have come to an end, that the elastic is starting to snap back. And there will be Conservative MPs in the south 
of England who are worried in a way that they weren't before and that will affect their relationship with their government, their views on policy and the conversation within the Conservative Party. It is just one by-election. The history of such things, for the Lib Dems in particular, is littered with false dawns. But it is a reminder that little in politics is permanent. Yet the fact so many are so surprised that the Conservatives can be beaten says much about their new dominance and raises the immediate pressure, not on the Lib Dems or the Conservatives, but on Labour for the next by-election contest in Batley and Spen.